Hey there, today I'm gonna to show you how I make pin cushions out of vintage items that I collect. This one I made out of a vintage head vase and she reminds me of my grandma. So I named her Millie. Look how cute her little earring is. Now grandma can watch over me while I sew. Vintage planters are the perfect thing to make a pincushion out of because where you would put the plant is where you make the pincushion. This one I did a little bit of patchwork before I made the pincushion. So I wanna show you this fun one. This just looks like a regular teapot, but when you take the lid off, the pincushion's inside the lid. I also made a little bit smaller one out of this toy teapot. And I like the teapots because you can just have the pin cushions in the lid, but inside the teapot, you can put your thread, your scissors and things like that. This one I made from a sugar bowl for my grandma. And this one's a cute little teacup. And I only made the pin cushion half as tall as I normally would because I didn't wanna cover up the cute little flowers. And that works perfectly fine. Here's one from a pewter sugar bowl. I used my new prim fabric and I tied a bow around it for a nice finishing touch out of my Be Cute lace. This next one is another little teacup. And isn't she cute? She's like a head vase and a teacup. I've used vintage feed sack fabric to fill her up from my grandma as well. I think it's really fun to make pin cushions out of these collectible vintage shoes as well. I use vintage fabric in both of those. Next up is this vintage truck. You just simply put fabric in the back of the truck bed. It makes a really nice size pin cushion. I love making pin cushions out of toys. And I made one out of this toy tractor. I just used the tractor seat and added a pin cushion on it. Here I've got this little reproduction of a vintage garden chair that I got it at the craft store. It was supposed to hold a little votive candle and I just made it into a pin cushion. And it's really fun. And looky here, you can even make smaller pin cushions out of tiny trucks. Super fun. And speaking of tiny, I think this is the tiniest pin cushion I've ever made, but look how cute. It's a little dollhouse metal rocking chair. I just love it. Sometimes you just need a few tiny, cute little pin cushions. These are made from vintage clothespins. You can clip them on the edge of your sewing basket or fit them in your project bags. Really portable and really fun. So whenever I'm thrifting, I'm always looking for unique vintage objects that I can make a pin cushion out of. I made this one out of a vintage baker's mold. I put the fabric in the center so that I could leave the outside to put my prim Ara floss and my cross stitch things. Here's like a smaller one's little angel food cake pan, a child's toy. You could do the same thing. I just put the fabric over the center part. I'm always looking through the section where they have all their tin and metal things. You can find jello molds, single muffin tins, lids to vintage jars to put a pin cushion inside of, and this little toy pie tin. I've used these a lot for pin cushions, and this large jello mold or bunt cake. They're really fun. The tin ones are pretty inexpensive and easy to do. In this bowl, I have things for my favorite vintage colors just waiting for me to make pin cushions. Look at that cute little shoe.
So I have this piece of fabric for my Vintage Happy Two collection. I love this floral. It's got so many vintage colors in it. I think I could use it really for the pincushion part for any of these objects. Kind of matches all of them. Hmm. Which one? That planter would be cute. The sugar bowls, the frying pan, uh, the jadeite. Which one? I think I'll end up going with the yellow sugar bowl. It's a pretty good size, so I can show you how I do these. So I'm starting with the 12 inch square of fabric and I use cotton crochet thread because it's really strong and I don't want my thread breaking during this process. And I use a doll needle because it's long. So I just cut a long length, probably longer than I think I need, and I tie a knot at the end. And I'm also gonna need some stuffing. I like to use 100% wool. So I begin by just taking big gathering stitches all around the edges of the fabric. Now, I know I cut a square, but I always go around the corners like they're circular. So when I'm all gathered up, I just kind of lay it down like this. It sort of looks like a little shower cap. I've got my corners sticking out and that's okay. Those corners are gonna help fill in at the bottom. Next up is the stuffing. Now I know this looks really big for that little sugar bowl, but just watch, you just start gathering it up. And the stuffing kind of feels loose in there, but this is gonna go tighter and tighter and tighter so it's nice and firm. Now I just gather it up as tight as it can go, and then I'm gonna knot it off. And see how those little corners are gonna tuck inside there. When I knot off, I usually do it a couple of times just to make it secure. Okay, so now for my glue gun. I like to use a cutting board so that it keeps my surface protected and that's what I keep my glue gun on. So that I don't burn my fingers, I use this scoring tool and I just tuck the edges in. You can see there's dried glue on there from past pin cushion making. But first, before I tuck in the sides, I need to glue in the bottom. So I put in quite a bit in the very bottom and then I'm just gonna put my fabric in there and kind of push down so that it kind of dries evenly. And I kind of let it sit there for just a minute. Okay, so now I'm ready to start tucking in the sides. So here's where my tool comes in handy. And I just kind of pull back the fabric and I'm just gonna apply some glue a little bit at a time on the side sections, and then I start tucking in. You wanna make sure that when you're applying the glue that you're actually putting down inside. You don't wanna put it on the top side because when you tuck in the fabric, you don't want that glue to ooze out. So make sure you're putting it down far enough. And then I just continue around until I have all of the edges glued and tucked in. So my pin cushion is nice and firm. Okay, now wasn't that easy peasy? I have several sets of my pretty pins. Here's just a couple different ones. 
and they come in these cute little plastic mason jar containers. And let's start filling up the pin cushion. So I think this cute little yellow sugar bowl pin cushion turned out pretty fun. I like to make larger pin cushions that you can tuck things into the side as well, like this one that I did with a mini loaf pan. It's pretty convenient to have your needles and your scissors and your thread all in one place, so you can just grab it like when you're binding a quilt or something. It's even fun to have your measuring tape in there. I hope you like my tutorial and now you want to make a few of your own. I'll chat with you next time.